Okay, happy day. This is Kurt Frankenberg, uh, the author of The Blueprint and uh, uh, founder of Radioactive Trading. And um, I'm joined by my good friend Mike Chepka, uh, the director of Options Education over at Power Options. How's it going there, Mr. Mike? Oh, it is going very well, sir. A little bit sort of hazy, dreary fall day, but the weather is nice. Um, well, the market's not cooperating with uh, me specifically on everything I'm trading, but some things are looking great and some things are just questionable this morning. So other than right. that, everything is PG keen. Well, good. Did you see that uh, that ratio spread swap I did this morning with uh, with DEC? I did. I was actually on a coaching session, so I saw it come through, and I didn't get a chance to look at it later. And I uh, actually had a customer who's going to try to join us this afternoon who was curious about it and. Uh, called mm -hmm. me a little bit uh, shortly after the coaching session right before the webinar as well so I hope he is was able to join us today okay yeah uh, so he may be on the line right now he may be yes yeah we've got folks uh, filing in we've got uh, about three dozen attendees right now well uh, it's up to 38 now 40 all right so um, well, let's go ahead, uh, Mike. I'm going to run a, a quick poll here just to uh, warm us up okay I wanted to ask how <coughs> Uh, came to be with us here today, and I want to mention that you'll you'll want to participate in the polls. Uh, this is a practice poll, but uh, uh, later on we're, we're going to have some polls that are going to help Mike and me to guide the presentation. And uh, you know, if if we've got a whole bunch of folks that are uh, gamma scalping, you know, spread trade animals, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to be saying, okay, this is a put option, this is a call option. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, if we've got some newbies, you know, we do want to uh, respect them too. And, and uh, so, so we're we're going to find out pretty much what our audience is about. We're going to uh, uh, we're going to guide the presentation, but more importantly, with the poll questions. Some of these pull questions are questions that are meant to teach a lesson, uh, kind of like Socrates. You know, he would uh, instead of just straight didactically lining it out for his students, he mm -hmm. would uh, ask them questions, let them come to their own conclusions. So that was um, a really good method of teaching. Okay, uh, Mike, I'm gonna close that poll because it's been up for a minute and uh, share the results. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay. Uh, so 35% um, uh, doing a web search, looking for some answers on uh, perhaps on how to bulletproof or how to mm -hmm. uh, how to uh, do spread trades without risk or uh, how to quit losing <laughs> things like that. We've got 15% uh, found out about us through forums, 35% subscriber already to Power Options, uh, and 20% heard me guest speak at another options trading uh, venue. So right. very cool. Okay, let me go ahead and hide that. And uh, Mike, can you see my screen up there? It says how to bulletproof your portfolio. Uh, yes, sir. I'm looking at that right now. Okay, I want to fulfill my promise that uh, went out in today's email uh, to show how you might get paid twice on a uh, spread trade. And um, there's there's actually a number of different ways. I didn't have time to patch together some slides to show my move this morning uh, mm -hmm. to, to to show exactly what I did, but. Uh, but I am going to go ahead and, and show um, one of several ways, actually, that you can uh, take money out of a spread trade and uh, even have a spread trade in place that can't lose. Right. That's kind of an exciting uh, proposition. So, okay. Um, so we've done an introduction. Okay. Um, how to get the most out of today? We're, I'm going to ask you to hold your questions until uh, specific places where we will stop and take questions. And the reason for that is that I, I don't want anybody to feel neglected. Um, but uh, you know, two things. Number one, um, we probably anticipate a lot of questions that you're going to have, and so have made the answer part of the presentation itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you'll just jot it down, um, if you'll jot it down and then cross it cross it off when we already answer it, <laughs> that'd be great. And if that question isn't answered, okay, number two, uh, Mike and I will be able to pay very close attention uh, to your questions if we take them all at at, uh, at specific break times. So okay, it's going to just be easier that way. Okay, and I'm going to ask you to participate in the polls and the prompts. We do want this to be a two-way thing. Okay, uh, uh, we're not saying hey, don't participate. We're saying yeah, participate. Um, but uh, uh, <clears throat> if if you pose a question to Mike when he's in the middle of answering. A question that I've given them. <laughs> it's going to be hard. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, here's what to expect. You're going to learn what the biggest problem is facing traders today and the solution to that problem. Mm -hmm. 
uh, you're going to learn how a simple tweet can drastically improve your trading if you do it. Okay, if you do it. And, and the thing is, a lot of times folks use uh, these webinars as uh, what I call infotainment. Uh, I think that's actually an, an, an actual word, uh, Mike, where it's, uh, uh, oh gosh, it, it, it looks nice, sounds cool, what a great idea, um, but never applied. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and the thing is, is if, if we do actually apply this, well gosh, I'm willing to take a bet. Uh, I'm willing to, to, to make a bet that most of the people on the line are going to look back and say, wow, um, I wish I had done this in the last 12 months. Okay. All right. Here's another thing to expect, uh, folks. You're going to learn two spread trades that uh, either take money now or guarantee more in the future, but they're done with zero risk. And the uh, spread traders are going to be uh, interesting, uh, interested to hear that. Okay, all right. So uh, Mike and I uh, would like to learn a little bit more about you. And so the first thing we want to do is find out what kinds of options trading that you're doing right now. Okay, mm -hmm. what kind of options trading are you doing right now? And you can choose more than one uh, on this. Uh, for example, if you do covered calls and you also do long calls, uh, you can select both. And so the results are going to end up being more than 100%, okay, because uh, folks may be voting in more than one category. We've got nobody so far, anyway, saying options mean a likey. Mm. <coughs> so it looks like a pretty savvy crowd here, Mike. We had up to 76%. It's now down to 74% doing spread trades and combinations. All right, let me leave that up for about another five seconds or so. Uh, I'm appreciating how quick everybody's responding. This is really something. I know that you're just settling in, uh, but, uh, but this big response on the, on the polls is really appreciated. Okay, and let me close that and s uh, share the results. Okay, in first place we got spread traders. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, in a distant second place is covered callers. And uh, folks that are doing long calls and puts come in third. Uh, naked calls, we do have some intrepid souls out there that do naked calls. Um, I'm going to talk about that today. I'm going to talk about how to uh, uh, do, do a trade that uh, may look like it <coughs> includes a naked call, but it, it doesn't. Yeah, we had a uh, we had an email right before the webinar started um, oh, regarding your promotion, and, uh, and I believe it was uh, a gentleman wrote in and said most people wouldn't be able to execute that trade since this involves selling uncovered calls. But that's not what we're doing, is it? <laughs> that's right. It's it's not what we're doing, um, and uh, most most folks can't execute that trade. In fact, if you're clear to do covered calls trading, um, the ratio call spread can be done. Uh, in your trading account, even in an IRA or a real stodgy broker like Schwab or, or uh, uh, Fidelity, you, you can actually do these trades if you have a talk with your broker ahead of time and, and uh, uh, set it up the way that I show you to set it up. So kind of cool. Um, it's ironic that uh, a lot of the safer trading strategies are not allowed. <laughs> mm. <laughs> when, uh, when, it, when it's considered by the uh, uh, old school, you know, the old guard of uh, brokers. Um, so, okay, let me go ahead and uh, close that. Uh, folks, if you do covered calls, if that was your main thing, that's, uh, that was second place, I guess 54% of the audience, which is still a respectable amount sure. the audience is doing. Um, but if you do cover calls, you're never going to want to do them the old way again, okay? Um, that's a promise that I'll make. Um, and if you do spread trades, how do you like the idea of spreads with zero risk? Kind of a cool uh, idea. Mm -hmm. So uh, here's the deal. Uh, Mike, I'm, I'm just going to mention this to everyone. Uh, we do have a product to sell. Okay, There's a subscription to Power Options uh, that, that uh, I, I think every options trader ought to uh, have. Uh, there's my uh, book, The Blueprint, which I think it, anybody that uh, owns stock uh, or place the stock or options markets. Mm -hmm. I think they need to have it. All right, but uh, we're going to give away. This isn't just a commercial. Okay, uh, we're going to make an opportunity at the end for uh, for those things to uh, be available. Uh, but um, this is going to be more uh, information than promotion. Okay, so if you feel as though I've given you something valuable, what I ask in return is that you at least think about investing yourself uh, and learning more. Is that fair enough, Mike? 
I think that's pretty fair, Kurt. I think that's uh, squarely fair. <laughs> squarely fair. All right, cool. Okay, so let's dive into it. The two biggest problems uh, regarding trading, okay, uh, come out of just one uncertainty, and that is the fact that we just don't know what's going to happen in the market. Okay, so the two biggest problems are we hope when we should fear, mm. and we fear when we should hope. You've heard a saying, Mike, and I know you have, uh, I know we all have, buy low and then sell high, right? Yes, buy low, sell high. That sounds easy, Kurt. Let's just do that. Yeah. <laughs> when I first heard that, my dad told that to me. He, he, uh, and, and what's funny is, is uh, uh, I was, you know, eight or nine. I was just learning about the stock market when I was a kid. Uh, you know, I was a nerdy kid. I was, I was into that. <laughs> and uh, my dad said in a conspiratorial tone, he says, son, I know how to make a fortune in the stock market. I said, how do you do that, dad? Mm. He says, buy low, mm. sell high. And I, I looked at him, I was like, wow, you know, I'll do that. And little did I know, he was, he was kind of tongue-in-cheek in it there. Uh, because, you know, when you buy low, um, you may not have bought at the lowest. <laughs> Correct? <laughs> That's you, uh, right. You see a stock on its way down and, and say, okay, let's pick that up. And what you've done is catch a falling knife. You know, it, it keeps going down. Uh, so that's not a happy thing. And uh, sell high, well, you know, selling high is relative. You know, what if you buy at 50, you sell at 55, and she goes to 100? Mm -hmm. You feel, feel like a chump, you know. So anyway, here's a, a piece of advice that's a little bit more useful. It's cut your losers short, and what's the rest of it, Mike? We want to let our winners run, don't we, Kurt? Right. This is another platitude, another trite saying that we've heard, but we can't deny the truth of, okay? Cut your losers short and let your winners run. I think it's a little more useful than buy low, sell high because it's a little less relative. It's more about, look, if you're losing money, stop the hemorrhaging soon. And if you're winning, well, hang on for the ride. Okay? And that makes sense. But we still don't always do that, do we? <laughs> no. We don't always do that. And that number two, what if you could guarantee that you would always do this? I mean, what if there was a way to structure your trades so that uh, if it went against you, you wouldn't get hurt or you wouldn't get hurt too badly? Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, if it went your way, you'd, you'd, uh, you'd do very well. Well, um, here's an example. Mike, uh, I played this during the time frame that is uh, shown. Um, looks like a pretty volatile stock. Uh, let's look over here on the far right. Would you sell a covered call right there? Would you buy this stock and sell a covered call? Well, I could, but I'd get a decent return, but I don't know if I'm going to get any further upside, and if the stock pulls back, I'm going to be in trouble. How about buying calls? Would you buy a call at this point? Again, you could if you're projecting <laughs> the stock was going to continue to move up, but uh, you know we've had a decent run. If there's a pullback, we're going to lose money on that position. Of course, we know what happened to the Greek shippers. This is XL Maritime Carriers, I believe. We, we know what happened to the Greek sh shippers shortly after oh, yeah. that point. Oh, yeah. The bottom did fall out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that I actually did uh, trade this issue mm -hmm. during this time frame that I'm showing. Um, and, uh, you know, there were some fat premiums involved, um, uh, both on the puts and the calls. There were some fat premiums. But the um, uh, thing is, the way that I structured my trade, Mike, was that uh, uh, I had bought into 200 shares of Exo Maritime Carriers and also a put option that was going to keep its, its uh, risk down to single-digit percents. Okay? Mm -hmm. I think at no point was I risking more than about 5% of my capital in the trade. Now, three weeks in, I did a riskless spread trade that took in income, but at the same time uh, did not add any risk, and it made me bulletproof. Bulletproof means that the cost basis of the stock and the put is lower than the strike price of the put now. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and, and so that was three weeks in. So three weeks in, I've got no worries, and then three more weeks later, closed the position for a 10.22% gain on the whole deal. Not, not on the little options play, you understand, but, but a 10.22% gain on the whole 200 shares. Okay. Now, here's the deal. It's not impressive that I made a six-week gain of 10%. What's impressive is at no point during that could have I lost more than 
Mm -hmm. And halfway through, I couldn't get hurt. Couldn't get hurt, okay? Uh, that's what we call bulletproof. So that was kind of a cool deal. Usually, Mike, uh, when you trade a cover call, for example, you're taking big chances on the downside if you're trading a volatile stock. Oh, but yeah. Trading, but trading a volatile stock is important to get a real sexy premium, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but then we cap our gains on the upside, so uh, not fun. So remember that saying, um, uh, cut, uh, cut your loser short and let your winners run? Absolutely. Okay, uh, I was able to do that in this case. Okay, um, the cut your loser short part was the beginning of it, and then the bulletproofing. Well, that was kind of a real nice intermediate uh, position to hold for another three weeks, mm -hmm. and, and, and then we end up uh, making money. Okay, Mike, uh, we've we've discovered what what folks are doing. We've got most people doing spread trading, and yes. second second place is cover calls. So uh, I'm going to ask a, a real Look back over the last 12 months. Are you happy with your options trading? Are you happy with your trading results? Okay, the answers range from a, a very uh, emphatic yes to a very emphatic no. Okay, and then uh, all the colors of the rainbow in between. We've got uh, yes in the last 12 months. I've done very, very well. Or, uh, geez, I'm happy with my trading, but I could stand to be happier. Or, hey, I've got mixed emotions. You know, I've won some, but I've lost some too. Um, you might be straight up unhappy, or you might even be ready to quit. <clears throat> and it sounds like you're typing. We're going to be able to answer some questions here. Oh, Go yeah. Ahead, we just had a question come in from Forrest. I'm sorry. I, I noticed it uh, a little bit late. I think he asked, asked this a, a moment or two ago. But he was just asking, what was that <laughs> stock and what time was it? Well, the stock was Exxon Maritime Carriers. And I believe, yeah, you answered that too, Kurt. I think we might have answered that while he was waiting for my reply. That's all. Yeah, that was in late 2007. Um, it's, uh, you know, I, I show recent examples too, but, mm -hmm. but, but that uh, chart is a real, uh, a real good visual. Oh, yeah, and it's not uncommon. So. I had a couple customers this week. Thankfully, one of them was in a married put on the position. It's not a stock that we would have uh, advocated him getting into. He just bought the blueprint. Um, it was uh, TRGT, I believe it was. Was that the one? Was it TRGT? It was, I think it was TRGT. It well, this, familiar. Yeah, the stock was uh -huh. at 18. It, it gapped down to about uh, $7. Um, oh, geez. One of my customers was protected. The other customer I was talking to was trying a new technique, and thankfully it was just a paper trade with his interactive broker's account as a bull put credit spread on TRGT. He really liked oh, the premium, geez. and you know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poor fella, he, he would have gotten hurt, huh? Well, it's That's a good right. thing he was in a paper trade. Mm -hmm. And then the other fella uh, uh, got into TRGT, and he, he did not get hurt, or he, he got I, hurt. But, he uh, took a loss bad. of about 3.5%, uh, I believe. Okay, 3.5%, but the stock went down from 18 to 7? I think it's at about, it was at 18 when he did his first income method. He'd opened the position with the stock at 16, did his first income method at 18, when the stock was trading at 18, and then the stock collapsed down to $7 per share. Wow, and he got out with a three and a half percent loss. Yeah, it's about that, Kurt. Yeah, I'd have to look. Pretty up cool. Three point four, three point five, something like that. Pretty cool. Okay, Mike, we're showing the results here. Uh, Zero percent said yes in the last twelve months. I've done very, very well. Uh, Fourteen percent said I'm happy with my trading results, but I could stand to be happier. Hmm. And so the other eighty-six percent uh, land in the category uh, where I think we can help. You know. Uh, actually, I think we can help all. I believe <laughs> Everybody so. Here, but uh, fifty-four percent, more than half, say mixed emotions. Fourteen percent, just uh, you know, straight up. Look, I'm unhappy. Uh, and eighteen percent are ready to quit. Okay, uh, throwing the towels in American saying it means, uh, you know, a boxer sees his. Uh, I'm sorry, a, a boxing manager. A manager. Coach, yeah. Yeah, sees his fighter getting a beating and says, "Geez, you know." Uh, yeah, there's there's no way he's going to win this. Let's just uh, quit and and protect the fighter, and uh, th that's when the coach would throw in the towel. Okay, and and that's uh, that's what that means. I, I'm saying that for our international viewers because I don't know if if that's an international saying. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so uh, anyway, let let me go ahead and hide that. Okay, um, uh, so so. If you met or beat your uh, expectations last year, you should be happy. And, and we did have 14% say that they were. If you lost money, that's just cause to be unhappy. And uh, if you had gains but not enough, you might have mixed emotions. And that's where most of everybody ended up. So uh, 
there's a problem. Why has the problem not been solved? Okay. While many folks are unhappy with their trading results, few know exactly what to do about it or mm -hmm. even where to start. And uh, uh, Micah, this whole presentation isn't going to be about polls, but I do want to know what folks believe is the solution for them. Okay? If, uh, if I had a magic word, I was a genie, but I can only grant one wish, okay? and mm -hmm. I can solve one of these five issues, okay, and that's it, what would you want it to be for you? What do you think the biggest problem is? Is it losing too much when you're wrong? Because you are going to be wrong sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, is it picking winners? Do you think you need to pick winners more often? Is it bad timing? Or is it that you don't spend enough time trading? Or do you think you need a better trading system to, to tell you when to get in and when, when to get out? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now this is a good question, and it's gonna it's going to uh, result in a little bit of introspection. All right, <clears throat> but uh, you know it stands to reason. If uh, if you were one of the eighty six percent that said they weren't happy with their trading, or even if you were the fourteen percent that said you could stand to be happier, well something needs to change, right? Yeah, you can't do the so, same thing over and over and expect the same results, right? Or expect yeah. different results. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, I don't know if it was Einstein. It's ascribed to Einstein, but uh, somebody said uh, that uh, that was one definition of insanity <laughs> mm -hmm. was to do the same thing over and over, but expect different results. So, okay, so let me hear that. Uh, Mike, the clear winner here is uh, the biggest problem is losing too much when I'm wrong. Mm. And second place, second place. Uh, uh, a lot of folks believe that they need better entry and exit signals. Okay, now uh, we're we're going to put that to the test here. Okay, uh, I I don't necessarily agree. Um, and as far as picking winners, uh, you pick the wrong guy. Okay, I I actually lose more often than I win, but I still make money. Uh, Mike, I think you win more often than you lose, right? You're better at picking winners. I am, but I'm not. I don't think I'm quite uh, quite up to uh, Ernie's. Um, records as winning and losers. But I also don't yeah. hold my positions as long as he does. I, I'm kind of between the two of you. Uh, you, you tend to uh, uh, not hold his positions as long as I do, and neither one of us are close to the average length of time that Ernie might hold one of his positions for the RPM right. techniques. Right. Um, the, uh, the point is that uh, uh, you know it's not really about picking winners. <laughs> if I'm making money, Ernie's making money, Mike's making money. Uh, I lose more often than I win, and, and those guys win more often than they lose. Well, you know, it's really not about the picking of the winners. It's mm -hmm. about controlling the losses. Okay, Mike, what was the biggest loss you took last year? It was about uh, 4.4%, 4.5%, Kurt. 4.5%. That's the biggest loss that you took. That's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and the biggest win that you had? Well, it was the, uh, had, yeah, it was in the year. There's 59.8% on uh, Silver Wheaton. I think that was the last 12 20%. months, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think you closed that in December. Yeah, I believe I did. Right. So uh, cut your losers short and let your winners run. Is uh, Mike is practicing that. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me ask you this, okay? Does the strategy of selling covered calls or selling naked puts go well with, the, with that idea? Well, no. It's uh, kind of opposite of that, isn't it? Yeah, uh, if you've got a winner on your hands, it gets sorted out of your account, mm -hmm. right? On the other hand, if you you buy stock and, and you're bullish, if you buy stock, even if you're shorting a call, that uh, you know shorting the call is a nice way to pick up a little bit of premium, do a little bit of a hedge. But uh, if you pick up five percent of premium and the stock goes down twenty percent, that's a net loss in my book. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that's allowing uh, your losers to run. What about vertical spreads, butterflies, condors, and all those? Things that fly, uh, mm. do they uh, do they let winners run? For example, let's say I'm in a uh, uh, vertical spread, bull call spread. Bull call spread, okay. Yeah, I buy the fifty dollar call, sell a fifty five dollar call against, and the stock goes to fifty five. Do I make money? Uh, yes. Well, okay. yeah, yeah. And if it goes to a hundred dollars a share, do I make more? No. No. And you make the same amount if the stock was at fifty five, fifty six, sixty two. 110, 1,040. 
<laughs> yeah, it doesn't allow winners to run. What about condors? Do I want uh, in a condor trade? Do I want that sock to, uh, you know, just fly to the moon? No, sir. You need this. It's a neutral position. You can generate a credit. It's a maximum credit that you can receive. Uh, you could do a debit condor as well, but with an iron condor, you want the stock to stay between a certain price range. If it swings wildly one direction or the other, you're going to hit the maximum loss in the position. So you can't let winners run. You can just take the premium that's there. That's right. Okay. So <clears throat> here's the deal. Uh, cover call selling has, has been long advertised as this uh, strategy for renting your shares of stock out. Okay, uh, for example, uh, the analogy is given that, okay, the, the stock is the house, mm -hmm. and you sell calls against, that's like uh, putting a tenant in the house, and you can do it month after month after month. And um, <clears throat> I, I don't have too much of an argument with that, except for the fact that um, every real estate investor I've ever known has um, invested in properties that they can insure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, uh, you know, th there's only like a 1% chance of a uh, house burning down. But, Mike, is there a, a better chance of that of a stock burning down? Mm. Well, not <laughs> really, right? <laughs> the, uh, the stock can actually uh, go to Hades in a handbasket, or it could just, you know, drop in value by 30% and, mm -hmm. you know, leave you holding the bag. And it's, it's not a really good... Uh, good scene if uh, if you're counting on your renters to pay for that 30 percent drop uh, I, don't, I don't know if that's going to happen okay so leaving yourself open to the losses while capping your gains it seems backwards so I got this crazy idea that if I was going to be bullish anyway you see uh, all these things uh, are in the same places okay it's a bullish strategy uh, the risk is safer okay but there's a very distinct difference between the cover call strategy and the protected put strategy or married put mm -hmm. and, and of course it's that the wins, the possible wins are unlimited. Yes. Okay. So does that, is that congruent with the cut your losers short and let your winners run? Well, it's not only congruent with it, Kurt, it forces us into that, doesn't it? We're forced to cut our losers short and let our winners run by simply opening the proper position. Right. You know, one of the uh, biggest things in trading the stock market is your psychology. Mm. And and the th and the thing is, uh, you know, if 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 you force yourself not to lose too much, well, that's a good place to start. <laughs> that's a really good place to start because very often, you know, uh, you buy at fifty and it goes to forty five, and you say, well, I was supposed to get out at forty five, but eh, you know, let's see what it does. And 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 that's a conversation that we have with ourselves very often, you know. Uh, but uh, uh, if we force ourselves to not take on too big of a risk. Why then? Uh, that's um, that's a different. That's a horse of a different color. Okay. So what's possible? Well, uh, I'm going to talk about the trade simulator tool here, Mike. Okay. And, uh, after yeah, after we do the trade simulator tool, we're going to show the structure that forces you not to lose too much, and then using that structure to execute riskless spread trades, um, like the one uh, I'm in right now with uh, with Deck. Okay. It's very possible we're going to make a um, thousand bucks with that, but uh, it's going to be impossible to move with it, and that's kind of interesting. Okay, so we're on RadioactiveTrading.com. Let me make the screen a little bigger. Okay, RadioactiveTrading.com, and on the resources page, mm -hmm. go to the um, uh, trade, trade simulator, simulator tool. tool. Half, halfway down the page. Okay, now Mike, what is this and what is it not? Well, <laughs> the trade simulator tool is a tool that allows you to run a simulation based on maybe your current trading record. And what it's going to simulate is if you put in your average gains when you're right and your average losses on your wrong, and then let's simulate that we're going to trade 100 times. We're going to flip a coin 100 times. Okay. If I make 10% when I'm right, I lose 10% when I'm wrong, maybe using stop losses, for example. I flip a coin 100 times. Heads, I'm right, I make 10%. Tails, I'm wrong, and I lose 10%. How would that work over time? Now, this isn't a projection of what's possible. This isn't a guarantee of what you're going to see in your portfolio. This is helping you compare maybe what are you doing right now in your trading account based on what you could be doing to realize better returns. Very good. Okay. So um, 
<clears throat> what we did was virtually flip a coin a hundred times. Okay, mm -hmm. we have one loss out of the gate and then a string of wins. That's kind of cool. Whoa, a long string of wins. Look at that. Uh, mm -hmm. Six winners in a row, and then a couple of losses and a win, and a couple of losses and three wins, and then four losses. And three. <laughs> okay, and then and then what's happening is this is getting tabulated, <clears throat> and we have over here on the left side the summary. Uh, 49 wins, 51 losses. So we yeah. lost more often than we won. Mike, at one point, we might have mistakenly believed that we had a winning trading system because we started with 10,000, and at one point, we're up to 15,009. Yeah. So it looks so good, kind of doesn't cool. it? Yeah, it, it does. And we might mistakenly believe that, uh, hey, we've got a real winner on our hands. Right. Uh, but the fact is that uh, winning streaks and losing streaks are a part of every trading record. Um, and this uh, particular money management, this ended up with us uh, cutting our account in half. So that's not a happy thing. It's mm -mm. <laughs> a happy thing at all. Okay, let's run the simulation again because I know what the problem is. The problem is we're just not right off enough. Okay, so let's right, run that again. Oh, there we are. Now we're right more often. That's a good one. Can you jot this down, Mike? Okay. We had we had fifty four wins, and of course, you know, opposite <laughs> that, forty six losses. Okay. Took her ten thousand dollars at one point. Rolled it all the way up to thirty thousand. Could you also write this down? The low value. We had a drawdown here, twenty eight percent. Low value was seventy two hundred. But uh, the moral of the story is, at the end, we had. 35% gain. $10,000 turns into 13501 Okay. Now, here's the deal. I'm going to suggest that this portion right here is not something that we can control. Mm -hmm. Is it? I mean, no. We can't, yeah. Can't control what the market's going to do. Uh, we can't control how often we're going to be right. Okay. I mean, we can certainly influence it. And I have to, uh, I want to address something real quick on this. Um, those of you who answered, and um, I might have answered part of this at one point in my trading career as well, that you need better exits and entry. And you might say, well, I I've seen things on the web that say that the last 12 months, they've had a success rate of 75%. They've picked 80% winners, 85% winners over the last 12 months. So well, the market is dynamic. And what worked for the last six months, or what technique worked for the last seven months to pick, let's say, a Bollinger Band range or, or something along those lines, or a MACD cross or something RSI, perhaps, Williams percent R, what worked in the past six months is not guaranteed to work the same in the next six months. The market's going to change. It's going to be dynamic, global economics, everything along those lines. Um, that's not to say that there aren't some services out there that have had, whether by luck or by crux, you know, a 75 or 80 percent win ratio over the last five years or so, just maybe by luck or maybe by some other tweaks there. But in general, any set of criteria that you find that's, you know, worked for six months and gave you 90 percent winners, that's not going to work six months down the road. It's not going to work two years down the road. The market's going to be ever-changing. Right. Another thing that they're not including, if, if uh, you know, if, if they're saying, hey, I had an 80 percent winner, you know, 80 percent wins. Mm. Some of they're not including is, well, how big were your losses? Yeah, on the other 20%. How big, how big were those wins? You know, If you had uh, you know, 8 out of 10 times, you chose a stock that went up 5%, and then 2 out of 10 times, you chose a stock that went down by 50. Mm. Well, you know, your 80% <laughs> win record is nothing to brag about. All right? So, so that's really important. Okay, Mike, uh, so we've got 54 wins here. Yep, and we're just illustrating uh, that we can't control that. No matter what you've heard, you can't yeah. control your win-loss ratio. That's right. Okay, so let's control something that we can control. Mike, you said that your big loss that you took last year was 4.5? It was, yeah. Let's, let's plug that in as, as uh, your loss limit. And then uh, your biggest return that you got last year was 59.8%, but that, that wouldn't be fair to put. Yeah, I've but not seen that it, again, and I don't know if I'm going to see that yeah. ever again. So. No, no. Uh, but let's take it down from 10%. We're going to actually go down, and let's just say our target is 8%. Okay. okay. Let's run the simulation again and, and see what we get. Well, that's a good one. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, of course, you'd, you'd expect to do well when you win more often than you lose. Let's try this again. And uh, it's an interesting one. How about that? We actually lose more often than we win. Lose more often than we win and still make money. Mike, is it better than the really good trading record from before? 
Oh, yes. I mean, the, the high, of course, of 36000 is higher than the other high and higher than the ending amount. But the ending amount there of 32441 and again, this is just a simulation based on the random order of winners and losers, but that ending amount was higher than the high from the 54 wins, 46 losses. Right. Mike, I just clicked it again. Okay, we've got uh, more losses than wins again. And look at this steep drawdown. Oh, my goodness. And that we was lost. after... That was after the third trade, <laughs> two losses in a row after one win. He took it down to, uh, what is that, 1.5%? Uh, yeah. <laughs> We've lost 1.5%. What are we going to do? Uh, well, you know, uh, that's, uh, that's kind of what uh, the sorts of things that you can expect when you skew your uh, risk and reward. You can actually lose more often than you win. Okay. Mm -hmm. And did, did we set a higher target return? No, we lowered it. We lowered it from 10 to 8%. We but lowered it. I can't control. I mean, we, we can shoot for 8%, sure, we can shoot for 10%, but I can't control that I'm always going to make 10% when I'm right on those trades. I can't control how often I'm going to be right versus how often I'm going to be wrong, no matter what uh, stock selection techniques I'm doing. The only thing I can control is forcing myself to know and forcing myself to only risk a certain percentage. I can guarantee that using the RPM setup. Very good. Okay, Mike, I'm, I'm going to mention right now uh, uh, that we've shown folks a way, we haven't shown them the practical tool, but we've shown them how to uh, take out the um, biggest problem, okay? And I'm going to say, don't take my word for it, take your own, all right? Looking back over the last 12 months, Mm -hmm. If you kept your wins, okay, we're not, we're not even talking about letting our winners run, like having bigger wins, okay? And just if you had kept your wins, but your losses were cut from whatever they were to 6% or less, would you be happier with your trading? And uh, after that, uh, we're going to show you exactly how to do that. Okay. You kept wins from last year, but your losses were 6% <clears throat> or less per trade or uh, you know one percent of your portfolio, okay? How would you have answered? Would you have said yes? I'm very happy with my trading. Uh, did you say no or mixed emotions and this would change it to yes? Um, did you have a losing year and this would make it a winning one? Would you have lost but lost much less? Mm -hmm. uh, or can you honestly say you know I did this? I I uh, was a fanatic about controlling risk and so I never had a loss of more than six percent. But I still did badly last year. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we've got three, two, one second left in the poll, and pow. Okay, Mike, uh, <coughs> have a looky here. <laughs> First of all, I want to point out the, the most glaring statistic, and it's not the 64. It's the zero. Nobody said, well, Kurt, I control my risk to less than 6%, but I still lost. Oh, good. How, how about them apples? Nobody said that, okay? All right, 23% would have still lost, but lost much less. Now, for those guys, I'm going to say, if you would have still lost, but lost much less, I think what we need to work on is letting your winners run, okay? But I can absolutely show you, absolutely show you how to keep your losses down to 6% or less, mm -hmm. okay? All right, 9% said I had a losing year and this would have made it a winning one. 9% had said no or mixed emotions but would have said yes, I'm happy with my trading. But 64% would have said yes, I'm very happy with my trading. Holy cow, what was our statistic before? Well, 14% said that they were happy. Outright happy with their trading results is what I had. How many said very happy? I don't have the number. Was it zero? It was zero. That's zero. why I didn't have the number written down. I apologize. <laughs> zero were very no happy. All right. So, uh, so is is sixty four percent better than you know zero? Well, mathematics tells us it's infinitely better than zero, isn't it, Kurt? Uh, yes. Okay. Is is sixty four percent better than fourteen? Yes, it is. It, yeah, okay. I'm going to ask uh, if you could put a number on that, okay? Now, in Colorado Springs, I did one of these classes live. It's about a year and a half, maybe two years ago. Uh, instead of doing <clears throat> this poll thing, uh, you know, I just went around the room, had people raise their hand. One fellow said, try $30,000. I mm -hmm. said, wow, you would have saved $30,000 last year? He said, not exactly. Uh, I would have saved $30,000 in my worst trade last year. Oof. See, this, this guy was a bigger fish than me. And, and I said, uh, okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> you should buy the blueprint yourself and 99 of your closest friends. And he laughed. And, of course, he did uh, pick up the blueprint. <laughs> but um, 
I'm going to ask folks to put a number to that, and then we're going to show the uh, actual technique of how to keep the losses down to six percent or less. And uh, besides that, we're going to show the uh, the spread trading. Uh, mm -hmm. Two of ten different uh, adjustments that you can do to a merry put position to take income without necessarily selling your stock. All right. <clears throat> and I'm going to leave this pull up for just a few seconds because I know there's a lot of anticipation in the room. And, and we're going to want to uh, unleash the radioactive profit machine. Let me give this just another three seconds, okay? Two seconds, one second. If you haven't got your vote in, please do. Okay. And then close, and we'll share the results. Okay. Um, the 6% snuck in at the last minute. They said, I really can't see how forcing myself not to risk too much could help. Hmm. Uh, and yet, we had nobody, nobody say, hey, I limited my losses down to 6% and I still lost. Okay, so, so there's a little bit of a disconnect there. Um, so for that 6%, I'm going to ask you to just keep paying attention. <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> for the 22%, would have saved at least $350. That's cool. 17% ahead by 1,000 to almost 5. 33% mm -hmm. 5,000 to almost 10. And 22%, this information would have made $10,000 worth of difference. Awesome. Okay, let's show how it's done. How can you actually do that? That's a real good question. Uh, let me go ahead and show the structure of a radioactive profit machine, which is a very specific way to put together a married put trade. Okay? Now, I'm strange, Mike. Uh, you knew that already. <laughs> uh, out of uh, stock market trading gurus, I'm, I think I'm the only fellow that brags about his losses. So here's a losing trade. I'm going to go ahead and brag about it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, January 7th this year, I picked up Intap at 56.50, and at the same time, a June 2011 $65 put. Now that's a little different than a regular uh, married put play. How so? Well, if you've ever read any free information at your broker or any online free information, uh, they'll describe a protective put or a married put as uh, simply buying shares of the stock. In this case, I'd buy Intap at 56.50, and at the same time paying a low price to buy an out of the money, maybe a 50 strike put, for just one month out. Maybe February 2011, 50 strike put, and I pay a dollar for it. Now, the problem with that is, yes, you only paid a dollar for the put, but because it's out of the money, the stock still has to drop more than 10% before the insurance policy kicks in. You kind of get what you pay for, don't you, Kurt? Right, just like with any insurance policy. I mean, if there's a big deductible, mm -hmm. a really large deductible, then you pay less for the insurance policy. But if you want really premium coverage, if, uh, then you're going to have to pay. You're going to have to pony up. Mm -hmm. um, thing is, if disaster happens, you're glad you pay that extra amount. Sure. Um, here was my deal, okay? I had invested 6750 but I've got a guaranteed exit at 65 mm -hmm. because of that $65 put, okay? So the amount that I've got at risk is the difference. The difference between the 6750 invested and the $65 I'm guaranteed to get back or $2.50, okay? Now, when you plug that 250 into the 6750 that's invested, that's 3.7%. So that's quite a bit less than 6% at risk. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you this, Mike, my stock went down by almost 11%. It went down by 108 In the meantime, I did a riskless spread trade that captured income. So that kind of dealt with some of the loss. And then my put kicked in and dealt with the rest of the loss. How much do you think I actually lost on this position? The stock went down by, let's say, 11%. It was 108 but the stock goes down by more than 10%. Okay. How much do you think I actually lost? Well, I know for a, a fact that uh, you didn't lose <laughs> the full 3%. I, I don't remember what it was, or the full 3.7%, my apologies. I don't remember what it was. I think you actually made 1% on this trade, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you're thinking of my General Mills trade. Uh, I General am. Mills, yeah. General Mills went down by 12%, and I made 1.2%. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's kind of cool. This one lost 1.2%. All right, and, and uh, I like to brag about that. I brag about my losers. You know, when, when the stock goes down by 10.8 and I lose 1.2, guess what? I, had, I have something to brag about. You know, uh, it, it's because uh, I did take the responsibility to control the one thing that I could control. Couldn't control what the market would do, but I could control how much of a loss I would take. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's the first place where we begin. After that, we're going to show our risk spread trades. Okay? Now, uh, green is where profits live. If, if NTEP had gone up, if the stock had gone up, 
I would have made money, okay? Mm -hmm. um, at, but uh, I was able to control the bleeding, okay, and get out of trouble. Now, this dashed line here, that's the break even. That's the difference between your, uh, uh, what do you call it, your cost for the married puts yes. and the strike price. All right. This area in here is, is the only amount that you have at risk, but um, a lot of folks will say, well, Kurt, your stock has to move up by this much before you're even making anything. Is that true? No. See, the, the trick is that we're not down. Let's take that NTAP example. You're not down that 250 or 3.7% the minute you open the position. As no. soon as you open the position, you could turn around and liquidate the stock in the put, Kurt, and you would have only lost maybe $0.05, cents, $0.10, cents, maybe $0.20. Cents. All you're risking is first... Right. Yeah, all you're risking is the bid-ask spread when you open the RPM. Now, this is true. This profit and loss chart we're looking at is true. But when we go back to that position, it was January 2011, and you had bought, I'm sorry, Kurt, a, uh, what's it, August? Uh, uh, June. June, I apologize. It was a June put. So this yep. profit and loss chart we just looked up there, that's true. I mean, that's, that's an accurate chart. If we held the position all the way to June expiration, made no adjustments of the 10 income methods you have in your quiver of arrows there in the blueprints, and the stock was still trading below the put strike price. Right, right. See, I'm in control of two of those three factors, mm -hmm. okay? I can't control what the stock will do, but I can control whether or not it hold on all the way until June. I didn't, by the way. I got out, I think it was still January when I got out. Uh, I, I control whether or not I'm going to hold on until June, and I also control whether or not I do adjustments. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's the deal, okay? So you don't lose that. Let's compare only three positions, okay? Straight stock, covered call, married put, okay? If your stock goes up 20% out of those three plays, what wins the biggest? No, the stock. I'm going to gain 20% yeah. of my stock price. The guy who bought, the investor, I'm sorry, who bought uh, 100 shares of stock and moves up 20%, he gets a straight 20% gain. Right. If you're a color, covered caller, you take a little less on the way up, right? Well, it's yeah, we capped our gains, but we did generate some premium. We get a, excuse me, we get a sign, so we make that four or five percent. Okay, and the Mary put is going to yield less too. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, say fifteen percent. Geez, you could even say ten percent. Okay, if you, you just made ten percent your way up. Okay, all right. So we take our winnings, put it into a new play. Your stock goes down twenty percent. Who's the biggest loser in this category? Well, the straight stock owner. No hedge of any kind, whether premium or insurance. What about the cover caller? He, he does have a hedge, so he doesn't lose as badly, right? Well, we generated another 5% premium, let's assume. So, yeah, we'll take down 15% of the covered call trade. Okay. And then the married put, if it was set up, uh, gosh, if it was set up with a 5% risk, mm -hmm. the married put would only lose 5%, right? That's right. Okay. So if we compare the, the two plays, okay, the guy with the straight stock, he made 20% on the way up. He lost 20% on the way down, so he's exactly where he started, right? No, that's not the way that math works. Let's assume that we're putting in our capital into both trades. When we make 20%, okay, so we have a good 20% gain, but we're going to lose 20% of that capital, and that's going to put us back to square one. works the same way if it was reversed, Kurt. If we lost 20% to begin with, you know, if we had $100 we lost 20%, we'd be down to 80 right? 80 yeah. And then if we made 20% of that $80 we invested next time, well, we'd make... Sixteen dollars, we'd still be at ninety-six dollars. It's a net right, loss so you, overall. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you end up in the same place. If you lose twenty, make twenty, you're, mm -hmm. you're going to have a four percent loss. You know, plus commissions, you're going <laughs> to lose that too. Okay. Uh, covered caller is uh, now. Let's consider this, Mike. We we were told that we we're going to make you know five percent a month. You know, mm -hmm. with our covered call trades. So uh, if we make five percent, you know, uh, one month, and then another month we. Uh, Take a twenty percent hit, okay? Uh, but uh, but we got paid both times. We got paid uh, on the way up, and we also got paid on the way down. Uh, so are we going to do better with the cover call? No, we're going to do worse because we capped our gains on the upside, but we still realized a significant portion of the loss on the downside. So it's a ten point seven, ten point eight percent loss here in that scenario. Yeah. It actually exacerbates the problem mm -hmm. of the. Uh, stock. Well, what about the married put? Okay, let's just say it was ten percent. I'm I'm showing fifteen, but let's say that the married put only takes ten percent, and I happen to know that uh, married put the way that I put it together, a twenty percent gain in the stock is not going to be a ten percent gain in the <laughs> in the married put. It's going to be better. Okay, mm -hmm. but what if it? What if you made dimes when you're right and you lost nickels when you're wrong? Would you Would you be ahead? Yes, you're still going to be ahead. 
Yeah. Now let me point something out. This is the same market, but it's different end results. If you're playing stock, you lose. If you're playing covered call, you lose. Okay. But in this particular uh, setup, the married put would win. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're right half the time. Right, right, fifty percent of the time. Okay, so uh, that's the beginning place. Now, after that beginning place, okay, what's different is this fits. Okay, cut your losers short and let your winners run. And, and we looked at the results already. Uh, let's look at them again. Okay, if you kept your wins from last year, mm -hmm. but your losses were reduced to say six percent or less, what would you say about your trading? All right, and then uh, when we uh, uh, put a dollar amount to it. Here was the result. Okay, ninety-four percent of us could put our finger on how much money it would mm -hmm. would make a difference. Okay, six percent said, "Well, I don't get it." Okay, and that's all right. That's okay. Uh, like I said, let's keep paying attention. Now, what else is different? Well, what else is different is that we can also do adjustments. I call these adjustments income methods because they're almost always done at a credit. Mm -hmm. right. Sometimes uh, the, an adjustment can be done to guarantee a higher payout. Uh, but uh, let's look at this one, okay? Lulu shares. Lulu was at seventy-one twenty-nine, and I picked up the eighty-dollar put for fifteen dollars and ten cents. So my total invested amount is eighty-six thirty-nine. Mm -hmm. But I can definitely get out at eighty dollars, right? Right. So so the difference is what's at risk: six dollars and thirty-nine cents, or uh, you set that against the 86.39. That's 7.4 percent. That's the biggest hit it can take. If it really, really tanked, and I waited until June. Sure. Right. If if it, if things look bad, I could probably get out at the six percent. Right. Mm-hmm. That's right, Kurt. Oh. Okay. Now, this is scalable. Okay. If you could do uh, it with 100 shares, risking 6.39 a piece, or you could do it with 200 shares, like I did, risking 6.39 a piece. Okay. You can do it with a thousand shares. But you'd have to do what? Well, you'd have to increase the number of contracts. If you bought a thousand shares, you'd need ten contracts of the put option. Right, ten put options, uh, or uh, you know, two hundred shares would mean two put options. Right. But no matter what you do, it's going to be that uh, controlled risk. Okay, single digit risk. So let's look at a graph of this trade. Here's where the trade begins. All mm -hmm. right, and this is what I call a radioactive profit machine. We have infinite upside potential. We have a maximum risk of seven point four percent. Okay, and it's two hundred shares, so we're looking at seventeen thousand invested. All right. So now. When the income methods are applied, uh, we do it usually to reduce the overall cost basis. Okay, and I applied a lot of different income methods to Lulu, but there's two in particular I want to show you. The first one uh, is this: the Lulu. Sh oh, whoops. Okay, uh, I had applied some other income methods that I, I just don't want to get into right now. Okay, but my cost basis for the stock and the put at this point was seventy dollars and nine cents. Okay. Okay, somewhere along the line, you generated a dollar twenty. You know, could have also been a—I know it wasn't, but it could have been a dividend payment, or you did an income method number, something along those lines. So you reduced the cost by a dollar twenty at right. one point. I think I may have sold a call. I actually forget. Okay, but uh, it reduced the cost basis on the stock. Okay, now here here was what I had paid for the put option. Okay, so my total invested amount is eighty five nineteen. Okay, so uh, instead of seven point four percent, I had you know six point one percent at risk at this point. Okay, now here's a really cool deal. I used income method number four, which I call the ATM machine. An ATM machine, you can take money out of, right? You can. Yeah, but what do you have to do first? <laughs> well, you have to put money in. That was sort oh, of the okay. caveat of the you can. You can if you have money in there. If you don't have money right. in there, you can't. Right. Okay. So check this out. Okay. Uh, Lulu at this point had risen above the strike price of the June eighty dollar put. Okay. So the June put went down in value. And I know a lot of folks look at you know Kurt. Gosh, you spend so much on put options. Why why do you do that? Okay. Well, the the June put went down in value, but so did all the other. Mm -hmm. Okay, the June eighty dollar put. So how can I use this to my advantage? Watch this. Uh, here we have the eighty dollar put that I originally bought. Okay, the cost basis on my stock. All right, and then I'm selling the eighty 
good. Now look at, uh, look yeah, at the how first, much I've quote unquote lost. Yeah, the right? first two lines, that's just your initial RPM setup there. The first two lines, now you're simulating, okay, well now that the stock's moved up, you're going to sell your 80 put for 510, uh -huh. and we're going to open, it looks like a June 90 put for 1010. For 1010, okay. Now a lot of folks will look at this and say, Kurt, you lost a thousand bucks or two thousand bucks you're gonna look at that because it's uh, two contracts at fifteen mm -hmm. ten that I spent and now they're at five ten but I gotta remind you in order for those puts to go down by ten dollars what did the stock have to do it went up by about uh, twelve or fifteen dollars I believe yeah the stock went up by more than that mm -hmm. okay alright so and I own both alright so there's no net loss on my account but uh, Mike if I was to sell uh, two eighty dollar puts and buy two ninety dollar puts. You call that a bear put spread, right? I call it a bear put debit spread. That's right. You're selling two at five ten, buying two ninety strike puts, a higher strike put for ten ten. Okay. Uh, and what I'm doing here is I'm selling for five ten, buying for ten ten. So it's a net debit of five dollars. Okay. But this is what happened to the position. Now I am bulletproof. Bulletproof means that, uh, well, actually, there's still 19 cents per share risk. <laughs> I might lose 19 cents, Mike. Uh, I've got 200 shares. I could lose a total of $38. Right. Uh, now, uh, here's, here's uh, what's really exciting about this, okay, is that the stock has gone up. It's actually gone up by $18. There we okay? go. Okay. Uh, but uh, I can't get hurt anymore. But do I still have an unlimited upside? That's right. We didn't cap our gains by doing anything that would uh, cause us to have an obligation to deliver our shares of stock. You still have that unlimited upside profit potential and a pretty negligible loss on the downside. Cool. Okay. I call this the ATM machine because I, I put money in, but um, I can take money out. It cost me $5 to do this adjustment, but it raised the strike price by mm -hmm. $10. Okay. And where I come from, trading $5 for a guaranteed $10 is a good trade. Yeah, and what Kerr means by that is he paid a $5 debit, but remember, he changed his uh, insurance policy, which was at $80, guaranteed exit at $80, up to 90 So he paid $5 to get a $10 higher payout. Right. Now, here's a question. Can you still do other income methods? Uh, yes. Okay. Can you do them at a credit instead of at a debit? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what about the upside? Well, let's leave it open. Let's let's still leave our upside completely open. Um, and uh, here's uh, one of the riskless spread trades that I, I promise. Here's the second one. Income method number five, buy one and sell two calls. And, uh, oh, that says put. It should not say put. Do you see, do you see where I see where you are, yeah. Okay, that's, that's my fault, gang. That is a call option. I bought to open one $85 call option and simultaneously sold... Hello, I'm trying to... 290, call, 290 so, calls. Two, yeah, for 290. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right, so the premium received was $2.90 times 2 equals 580, right? Yes. And then I spent 560, so uh, do I have a net credit or a debit? A small credit. You're getting about 20 cents here of total net credit on this little ratio call spread. Right, okay, so I've been paid 20 cents, and uh, that's kind of cool. Okay, now, looking at just the ratio call spread, this is something that could spell trouble. And uh, if you look at the total cost, the cost is negative, meaning that I'm paid to take on this, uh, to take on this responsibility. Okay, mm -hmm. I've been paid $20. Now, if uh, that's $85 call that I've bought and two $90 calls that I've sold, so if the stock goes to 90 and stays there, and uh, what happens on expiration Friday? Your 290 calls expire worthless, Kurt. You have no obligation to deliver stock. And right. your 85 call that you purchased is going to be worth $5 of intrinsic value. So you can close your 85 call for about five points. Your 90 calls expire worthless. You're looking pretty good. Yes. Okay. So that's where we get this maximum profit here of uh, 520. It's the $20 that I receive on the mm -hmm. front end and the $500 that I might receive later. Okay, so that's pretty cool. What about all this uh, downside here? Uh, yeah. What's that caused by? Well, you shorted two calls and you have one long call. So one of those calls is naked right now. 
and a naked call has infinite risk. Can't get around that. If the stock went up to 1,000, well, you'd get five points for your little debit spread there, the long 85 call and the short 90 call. But then you also have a short 90 call that's not covered by anything. You'd have to buy shares of stock at 1,000 and deliver it at 90. Okay. Now, that's the normal situation. The normal situation mm -hmm. is if I buy one call and sell two, I have unlimited exposure to the upside. Yep. Okay. Stock goes up, I could get hurt. But does all of this red area here, does that still apply if I own 200 shares of stock? Well, no, because now if you take this ratio spread you're looking at, your short two and long one call, you add 200 shares of stock to that position, well, that naked call you had, that one short call that you had is covered by 100 shares of your stock. So that removes the infinite risk, and you still have another 100 shares of stock that's not obligated by a short call. So you still have an infinite upside on your position. Yay, infinite upside position. This is the, uh, the net of uh, all, the, all the stuff we've been talking about. Okay, I've got 200 shares protected by put options, bulletproof because of the ATM. Mm-hmm. Bulletproof because of uh, income method number four, and uh, and now I get to do my little ratio call spreads. Uh, why would I not want to? I get paid to do it. Um, if the stock goes down, I keep that credit. Uh, I can't get hurt. It's just uh, more bulletproof. Goes, yeah, if the stock goes up, it kind of accelerates between eighty-five and ninety. Okay, uh, so uh, I had been bulletproof. Now I've I've got a better situation here. I'm taking a credit, and uh, who knows where it's going to land. But if it does land. If it lands at ninety dollars, see, looky here. If it lands at ninety dollars, I've got piles of profit. If it lands at ninety dollars over here, not so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> does, that, does that make sense? Yeah, I'm kinda, with you so far. Kinda, yeah, kind of cool. Okay. Now, remember, it's the context of owning those two hundred shares, uh, which were bulletproof using put options, that makes this ratio call spread totally riskless. Mm -hmm. Okay. Even if it wasn't bulletproofed, but I still own the shares, the ratio call spread itself would be riskless, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah, because I've got the stock on hand to deliver in case the stock uh, takes a run up. All right. So I had opened one long call and two short calls against Lulu, and um, here's how it worked. Okay, I got uh, twenty cents. Okay, on the front end. Mm -hmm. We've already shown all this. I'm, I wonder why that's it's all. It's kind of redundant. Okay, here's the management. Okay, <laughs> the stock went to eighty. Uh, I'm sorry, ninety three dollars. Okay. Now, on expiration Friday, I've decided that I want to keep all of my shares, all 200 shares. Okay. You got In a problem. Order to do that, <laughs> yeah, I've got a problem because I've got two short calls at the $90 strike, mm -hmm. and I've got uh, 200 shares of stock. And one long so, call. And one long call, okay. So what I did here was to close one of those $90 calls for $3.50. After all, it's, you know... Uh, in the money, and uh, remember the premium that I received mm -hmm. for doing the ratio cost spread was twenty cents, right? Dead on. That's right. Okay, so it's like I have to spend three dollars and thirty cents, not three fifty. It's like I have to spend three dollars and thirty cents to keep my stock, right? Okay. Yes. Okay, but what is left over after I close one of those short calls? I've still got two hundred shares. Five. Yeah, you still have two hundred shares, shares. Two puts. Uh -huh. A long eighty-five call. And a short $90 call. This looks like a bull call spread setup. It is a bull call spread setup. And what's really cool about it is it's expiration Friday. And now I've pretty much guaranteed, since the stock is trading over 93 bucks a share, mm -hmm. I've pretty much guaranteed that it's going to close at its maximum profit. That's right. You're going to be able to, technically what your broker looks at, Kurt, is if you leave it open through expiration, 4 o'clock on Friday passes, well, that weekend, what you're going to see Monday morning when you pull up your account, it's going to look like your broker bought 100 shares of stock at 85 and then immediately sold them for $90, so you get $5 back in your account. That's right. If, if your broker uh, practices automatic exercise like mine does, uh, you're, you're going to just have this. It, you, you don't even have to do anything. This just mm -hmm. happens in the middle of the night. Okay. So what's actually happened is I've gotten a net credit of $1.70, which is better than if I had just sold the covered calls. If I had just sold covered calls, I'd, I'd be buying them back at a debit, wouldn't I? Well, yeah, you would have sold the 90 calls originally. I forget what the price was. Was it 290 No. 
That's yeah, two ninety. Yeah, it was. I'm sorry, guys. Two ninety. My apologies. And then you would have had to buy it back for three fifty. Just that one short call. You would have capped the game, but you would have bought it back for three fifty. So you would have added sixty cents onto your total position. Sixty cents to your risk. Yeah, sixty cents cost basis. But uh, in 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 fact, what has happened is I've been paid a dollar seventy, and the stock has gone up, and I get to keep it. <laughs> kind of cool, all right. So uh, Lulu did pretty good. Um, the income methods reduced the gap, and once that gap uh, between your um, uh, between your break even and your um, uh, lower strike put put option, okay. Once that is less than zero, you can't get hurt anymore, but you can still play it. You can still play it. In this case, I played that uh, ratio call spread to get paid twice. I got paid mm -hmm. twenty cents to open it. And I uh, got another net dollar fifty to close it, so a total of a uh, dollar seventy to play that ratio call spread while I'm sitting on bulletproof stock. Kind of cool. Kind of cool. So uh, the first part of this was, you know, limiting our risks in the first place. Okay, and, and I like to say, don't pick stocks, pick stops. You want to pick not a stop order, but you want to pick the place at which you will get out without uh, any quibbling. Okay, mm -hmm. by using a put option. All right. But the second part of this was don't time trades. Trade time. It was the time value of those uh, uh, short call options that paid for me to take another position in the stock. And manipulating the at the money bell curve with the at the money, uh, I'm sorry, the ATM uh, uh -huh. income method that helped you get close to bulletproof status before swapping, That's the, right. using the manipulating the time value. Excuse me on the income method number five trade. That's right. Uh, when I when I did uh, the the ATM machine, it was uh, I was swapping a put that was all time value mm -hmm. for a put that had some intrinsic value. So I'm using time value to pay for intrinsic value. That's right. Kind of cool. Uh, what what I've done is is uh, make it bulletproof and uh, and and then be able to play now, uh, spreads even more. What so, didn't you have, Kurt? You didn't have a crystal ball. You didn't know no, Lulu was going to go up in price. Next. And when you did income <laughs> method number five, you didn't know the stock was going to be trading right around ninety three instead of gapping up to one hundred or pulling back to sixty eight or sixty nine dollars per share. You didn't know any of that. I had no idea. This is what yeah. the um, well, one of the answers here is, you know, when you see the answers here, what we're going to follow up with. But you might ask, well, Kurt, you had 10 income methods. Why did you do income method number five? Why did you pay the debit to do income method number four first? And the answer is, is that it matched Kurt's SEGA model. And what we mean by SEGA model is that for each income method in the blueprint, and even for the RPM setup, the decision, matrix, the decision process we use is called the SEGA model, conditions, expectations, goals. Before Kurt entered either of those trades, he looked at the chart. He ran a simulation using the Power Options tools to say, okay, if I do this trade, am I happy with the new catastrophe report? Does this match my personal goals? Now, his goals and his expectations, well, his goals are always his goals, sorry, but his expectations <laughs> might not have come to play, but that's why you evaluate it first. You say, well, even if my expectations don't come true, am I still happy with this trade? Kurt would have still been happy receiving that extra 20 cents, getting you know pretty much more uh, bulletproofing his position there, well, I didn't come at the number five trade, but the payout on the upside, he just really matched his goals of what he wanted to do. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's it's kind of cool. If if uh, um, if I get paid twenty cents to do something that can't mm -hmm. hurt me and mm -hmm. can uh, uh, pick up more credit, why wouldn't I do that? <laughs> that sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah, that's why I use the money net there. That's uh, income at number five. So, okay, Mike, I've left that pull up there. Uh, uh, the clear winner. Uh, out of out of reasons to do income method, uh, I'm sorry, mm. reasons to uh, use it, radioactive trading. The clear winner is the possibility of being bulletproof, but still letting your trade right. Mm -hmm. You know, still still uh, shooting for the moon and and uh, and doing better with it. So that's kind of exciting. Uh, let me go ahead and hide that poll, and uh, let's talk about what we should do next. Okay, what should I do now? Well, uh, I've shown you what the real problem is in trading stocks and options. Okay, and we've seen why it has gone unsolved. Most folks believe that, geez, you know, if I just had better entry and exit uh, criteria, or if mm -hmm. I could pick winners. Well, um, you know, we, we showed with the comparison between stock, covered calls, and married puts, you know, that it, in a bullish play, all three of those are bullish plays, right? Yes. Uh, okay, in a bullish play, uh, we were uh, trading the same issue 
and using the same exit uh, criteria, you know, the, the same dates, you know, getting uh -huh. in at the same dates and getting out at the same dates. So did it have anything to do with timing or picking? No. It, it had something to do with structure, didn't, didn't it? It absolutely did. Yeah. Uh, we had a net gain with the married put, but a net loss with uh, plain, just the plain stock. And that net loss was exacerbated by using a covered call because we... Capping the gains, winner. yeah. Yeah, capping the gains, failing the letter winner's run. So we've seen why that problem's gone unsolved in the past, and now you have a viable solution. The polls tell the story, okay? Uh, we, we did uh, uh, ask uh, this question here, if you kept your winners last year, but your losses were kept down to 6% or less, mm -hmm. what would you have said? 64% would have said, yes, I'm very happy, and 0% had said that. 14% uh, had said, I'm happy, but I could stand to be happy, yeah, right? That's right, 14%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me go 54 back to with mixed emotions. 14% um, were unhappy, and we had 18% ready to just throw in the towel. Great, huh? Hopefully those folks aren't ready to quit anymore, okay? Maybe you've got some, some hope, okay? All right, so now you have a vital solution. Whoops, you can plainly see the difference. You can start with very little risk, you know, uh, 3.7% risk was my example with NTAP. 7.4% uh, mm -hmm. was my example with, uh, with Lulu. Um, but then uh, after that very low risk, there's a possibility that you can become bulletproof. doesn't always happen, but uh, you know, at least we can't get hurt too badly, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. If we do, if we do get bulletproof, uh, gosh, we could even take income afterwards while leaving the upside open. In the case of the... Uh, uh, income method number five trade, I left the upside open. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if Lulu had a runaway, uh, you know, ran away to the moon, uh, so, so would my position. Okay? Right. Uh, and, you, and you don't get that with cover calls. You don't get that. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, how to get the blueprint. We're going to go ahead and show uh, how to get the blueprint. Um, I think maybe some of you already own the blueprints, and we've got some better, uh, better uh, support now. Uh, this is our final poll. I'm going to say, uh, what do you want to know more about next? Okay, would you like to know how to find these kinds of trades? Uh, would you like to know uh, which of these income methods can be done in a IRA? And, and whether uh, your broker will allow the things that I showed today? Uh, would you like to hear the offer for the blueprint? Or do you already own the blueprint? And if you do, uh, would you like some better support? All right, I'm going to leave that up for another few seconds. Three, two, one, and close. Okay, clear winner here. Let's hear the offer for the blueprint. Uh, and then in second place, we've got uh, how do I find these kinds of trades? Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, first of all, I'm going to answer the question, can those income methods be done in IRA? Everything that I showed today could be done in an IRA. Will my broker allow the things you showed today? If your broker will allow you to buy stock and buy a put, if your broker will allow you to sell cover calls, he'll allow what I showed today, even that racial call spread, because of the context in which it's done, the way that it showed. Okay? All right, so cool. Let's, uh, let me go ahead and, and uh, show that offer for the blueprint there, Mike. Uh, oh, I need to hide this donut. Mm-hmm. Okay, and uh, I'm open to questions, too, if we have some, some questions. Well, I've got one I'm answering right now. I don't know. You can feel free to answer it, Kurt, but I've got a pretty good answer to this because I've run webinars on this for Power Options. Um, one of our uh, old friends, he's joined us a long time for these webinars. He, he comes in often, not Mr. Emmett, really, really good guy, really lo very thoughtful investor, very thoughtful trader, likes to question things. But anyway, long story short, uh, he, Emmett says, I've recently become very interested in trading time diagonal spreads, calendar diagonal spreads, using weekly options to generate income. It seems they can become bulletproof, any comment. And so far, my answer is that, well, with diagonal spreads, you're risking 100% of the debit. You buy a call option that's far out in time, maybe in the money, and then you sell an at or out of the money call against it. You're risking 100% of that debit on the position. Now, if everything works out right on a week-by-week -week basis, and over time you may be able to reduce the cost of the long call to zero, but it's going to be over an extended period of time because the weekly options have lower premiums due to the short time decay. Now, 
I've run a couple webinars on this for the open discussion presentations I host on Friday. We actually ran a couple examples where someone was trying to compare sort of a collar spread. It was an RPM using a weekly option curve for income method number one uh, compared right. to the standard series. And what we showed is based on their commissions that, yes, if I sold the weekly option uh, over a four-week period, I'd get a much higher return and a, and a higher premium. It was about a 4.4% static return versus a 3.3%. But when you factored in the four commissions on 100 shares of stock or on you know, two contracts or on five contracts, the standard option was better because you only paid the one commission. After you tallied that up for the four different cycles, the weekly option was actually less of a premium than the standard monthly. Now, it's just based on his costs and his commissions, but you have to take that into account because the weekly premiums are lower. Now, Emmett, that's, that's my response to that. That's trading is not for me. I do have customers at Power Options that are working with the search tools and trying to find a way to do diagonal spreads, but it's a, it's a trade-off there. and it's, um, You can be bulletproof. It's just going to take a longer period of time, and by the time you get that long call you bought bulletproof, you might be right at the expiration of the long call. So you didn't lose anything, but what was your gain? Yeah, I'll, I'll address that just briefly by saying that with radioactive trading, your position sizing is automated. Mm -hmm. you, you automatically cannot risk too much. Uh, but uh, in, in a double diagonal, um, you've got to practice really good money management, meaning uh, you, you can't enter you can't as many... Yeah, you can't enter as many contracts as you can enter. <laughs> yeah, as you can afford, as you can put money into, that's it. As you, yeah, as, as you can quote unquote afford. All right, so uh, um, uh, let's go ahead and talk about the blueprints, okay? We had 63% say, let's hear the offer for the blueprint. Uh, the blueprint is $339. Mm -hmm. uh, within the United States, it comes with $11 shipping. Uh, uh, internationally, it's forty-one dollars shipping, uh, except for Canada. Canada, I think, gets it for the eleven dollars. They do. That's right. Uh, but if you're in Australia or India, uh, you know, uh, Belgium, if you're in France, uh, it's going to be forty-one bucks. Okay. And uh, let's see, the, the the blueprint itself. We've got a special offer going uh, right now uh, that uh, is is only available to folks that uh, that take action quickly. Okay, and uh, the first one is that um, first 10 folks to order the blueprint are going to get a, a half hour consultation with either myself or Mike. Uh, if, if you do that half hour consultation with me, it's going to be regarding your portfolio and, and how to convert over into um, uh, married put positions to keep you out of trouble. Okay, uh, and, and uh, we can talk about your unique situation. Uh, I had one fellow that uh, was in shares of McDonald's. He had uh, a very low cost basis, and I showed him how right out of the gate he could make himself bulletproof and get paid to do it. <laughs> and he'd never seen anything like that before and mm. was a real fan after that. So um, so anyway, the first 10 buyers, uh, that's the, the first deal. Um, of course, you can also use your 30-minute consultation to get a training session with Mike on how to use the power option tools. Here's the other bonus, uh, Power Options tools for a month for free. Normally that's a $79 value, but you get it free mm -hmm. uh, if you pick up the blueprint today. Bonus number three, uh, you're going to uh, get the quick action guide, which we'll discuss in print, you know, how you may uh, roll over all of your uh, positions now into positions that are limited risk. And then finally, the uh, fourth CD, Foundations of Radioactive Trading CD, uh, which contains information that's not found in the blueprint regarding managing multiple positions. And uh, it's something that at first I wanted to put in the blueprint, and then I thought, wow, that's maybe too much. Uh, but then again, we thought, wow, you know, some folks are big, big enough fish that they, you know, have million dollar accounts and uh, or even ten million dollar accounts, you know, seven and eight digit accounts, and they're going to need that information. So we uh, keep that. Uh, available on a separate format. Um, so the foundations of radioactive trading see that's normally $89. So there's there's over $400 worth of free bonuses that come with your purchase of the blueprint today and the blueprint itself is only 350 if you're within the uh, United States, 380 if you're uh, if you're not. Okay. Okay. Now uh, let's see. Go ahead. Questions. Oh, while we're on this screen, a couple questions came in from Kelly uh -huh. and from Roger. Kelly wants to know, does the blueprint cover all the option trades? Kelly, the blueprint covers 
all the option trades that are applied to the radioactive trading technique. This isn't a book on all option strategies because a lot of the option strategies we wouldn't use. Too much risk. All right. So this isn't right. a book that's talking to, and the, by the way, I don't know if there's any book that covers all option strategies. You look at all the combinations, there's probably 300 different option strategies that anyone could claim to be doing at any one time. You know, I have customers that call me up, Kelly, and said, well, I have a long stock, I have two short calls, two long calls, one long put, three short puts, and another long call at a higher strike price. What do you call that? I kind of call it a big mess. I'm not sure. Let me look at it graphically <laughs> first and then figure it out, okay? But what the blueprint covers is what we feel, myself being the director of education here at Power Options, what Ernie Zarenner feels. He's been trading for 30 years with options, and he's the president and founder of Power Options, and of course, Kurt, and uh, our hundreds and hundreds of blueprint owners, what we feel is the best way to trade in the market to properly limit your risk and the 10 income methods that can be used. They are all relatively common option strategies, but done in the proper context. So your risk is not increased. You can still earn extra premiums and readjust your position. You won't see a lot about calendar spreads in the blueprint. You won't see a lot about short straddles or short strangles because those positions carry infinite risk with them even set up in certain ways with the long stock position or the married put, the short straddle will still take on additional risk if set up the wrong way. So this isn't a book on all option strategies. It's a book on the correct way to trade stocks and options. Now, um, Roger also wanted to know, does the blueprint detail the management of the trades? Kurt, why don't you handle that one? It, absolutely. The, the yeah. blueprint talks about, uh, first of all, the SEGA model, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, determines whether or not you want to get into one or the other of, of 10 different income methods, depending on what the market is doing, depending on what your goals are, uh, and depending on what your expectations are. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's kind of a filter to tell you which, which of the income methods make the most sense. And then after that, uh, as the market changes, uh, what kind of exit strategy makes sense? Uh, so managing the trades is uh, a very big part of what's in the blueprint. Mm -hmm. uh, there's five different ways to manage the trade that I showed today. <laughs> there's five different ways to manage it, and uh, um, and they're all good. You know, I mean, they they all end up uh, doing well for you. And they're all using different uh, scenarios. Uh huh. So. Uh, so that's there's the answer to that. Do we have some other questions? Oh, one just came in. Uh huh. Oh, th okay, Kelly. I, there are ten. It, okay, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not dissuading this question, but I, I don't know if we're getting this across. Kelly wanted to know how many options trades to suppose is in the blueprint. Ten. Uh, it, yeah, there's ten different income methods that can be used against the married put setup. Remember, every position, Kelly, started with the married put, and the ten different income methods are adjusted off of that. There are three different ways to trade income method number five that are discussed. There's a couple ways to trade income method number six. We've got a couple ideas for you on income method number four. You could do it this way, or there's an alternative income method number four you can use if you're already blueprint. You can combine income methods, one and nine, three and nine even. I've seen Kurt do that before. Uh, four and six, for example. Five and, uh, that was a five and three, Kurt? I've seen you do that before, too. Yeah, three and five uh, go together pretty well. I don't want to run a statistical model to see how many there are, but there are many different ways to trade this, Kelly. But the great principle behind it is because you're doing it correctly with that stock and put combination to begin with, these trades that are shown in the blueprint, which is technically infinite if you do the different combinations and the different ways you can set them up. But, but there's dozens of them. And there's, there's times when you don't even want to do an income method. And Kurt and I yeah, have talked about this, and Kurt has seen me do it. The best thing to do is just not do it. Wait. Let the stock run. If it's going, let it run. You might not have to do anything. <laughs> That's an income yeah. method, too. That's the 11th income method. Don't do it. <laughs> Jesse Livermore said uh, uh, that uh, uh, sitting is taking a position, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. I agree with that. I agree with that. So very good. Okay, uh, so uh, let's see. I'll, I'll go ahead and answer just uh, one more question, and uh, and then we'll we'll go ahead and close up for today. Um, I want to mention that the bonuses are not listed on the site, but they will be listed in your receipt. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, should I go over those again, Mike? Why not? Okay, go ahead and sift through and, and see if there's uh, some questions that would, uh, uh, or a final question that would be good for everyone to hear the answer to. And um, uh, we'll go through the, uh, the bonuses again. Okay, number one, a 30-minute consultation with myself or with Mike. Okay, mm -hmm. if it's with Mike, it's how to use the Power Options tools. If it's with me, it's uh, regarding your uh, uh, portfolio and, and uh, uh, how you might use the income methods and or 
uh, bulletproofing to uh, to further secure your investment. Okay, uh, I'm not going to give trading advice, but I will give you a second set of eyes and and uh, make you aware of uh, some really um, interesting strategies that can bulletproof you. For example, mm -hmm. um, so that's the first bonus. It's usually a hundred ninety five dollar value. The uh, second bonus would be uh, the uh, Foundations of Radioactive Trading CD, eighty-nine dollars, uh, and the, that CD comes with you for uh, with it for free. Mm -hmm. uh, third bonus is um, subscription for one month to Power Options. Normally, it costs you seventy-nine bucks. I went out of order. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to think when I'm leaving out here. Uh, oh, quick action guides, normally $50 value. And uh, uh, if you want to follow my trades on Fusion, you can do that. And uh, normally that's $69 a month, but you, you get a coupon to where it's $59 off, only $10 oh. for you. Okay. I think I've got the perfect question. And this okay. is, this not only applies to less. this not only applies to our beginners, but it also applies to our advanced ones, our advanced traders who might not this might be their first time. Ross, this is the perfect question. Uh -huh. This looks complicated for a newbie. That, that income method oh. number five is complicated, Ross. I'll admit that. When Kurt goes into that, sometimes he, I'll admit freely, everyone, sometimes I blank out a little bit. <laughs> it's numbers going here and there, <laughs> adjustments going here and there. He's showing you, you know, a very good way of how you can apply this. But not all the income methods are like that. And, and income method number five is really simple. But first, though, for a newbie, someone who's just coming in, I can see how that could be complex. You know covered calls. You might know a couple things about options. But you see this amazing spread that's no risk, and it looks complicated. But it is able to do in the IRA. So the real question here, Kurt, is complicated for a newbie, where to start? What's your answer? Simplest form, where to start? Okay. Well, the, the blueprint is targeted to two types of audiences. Number one, it's targeted to the people that have gotten hurt by the covered calls uh, trading gurus. Okay. Mm -hmm. And income method number one through four is, is, is uh, all that was included in the first edition of the blueprint. If you understand how to do covered calls, you understand how to do income methods number one through four already. Okay, you're just going to need to uh, uh, take a look at it. I've I've had Chicago floor traders say to me, "Man, this makes a lot of sense. I've never thought of it this way before, mm -hmm. but I've known all these strategies." So, uh, so for a newbie, yeah, it, it's going to lay things out for you, and make them really simple and bare. Now, income methods uh, five through nine, little more complex. This is the second group of folks that the blueprint is written for, and that's the folks that have uh, gone through the spread trading programs and thought, well, you know, uh, this is okay, but uh, I've got to be right more often than I'm wrong, or I get in trouble. Right. And and for credit, for folks doing credit spreads or debit spreads, any kind of spread trades, I want you to take a look at spread the spreads of uh, income methods number five through nine. Particularly, uh, well, actually, even four, two, uh, three, four. Oh my gosh, three through eight, <laughs> because uh, some of them are things that you've likely never seen or thought about, and mm -hmm. the context in which it's done is definitely something that you've never seen or thought about. And uh, so that's um, that's who the second uh, category is written to. Um, you can do very well with just the first four methods, but as you get more comfortable. You won't be a newbie anymore, and, and right. you will be comfortable enough to do the other uh, six methods. Cool. All right, that was a great question. Of course uh, it Mike? is. Yeah, we're at uh, uh, <laughs> we're at half past, so I think it's about time we uh, 